The drive to research this subject comes from a film and one of my earliest memories. To some, one that might seem silly. Luke, you're going to find that many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. So if truth is a matter of perspective and is influenced by internal memory struggles and external influences, as discussed in earlier parts, how will it set us free? And how do we judge truth? Well, if we try looking past biases and see from a different perspective, more facts are revealed, helping to balance personal truths. But amazing things are all around us. And the fact that videos like this can single-handedly be made was impossible only a generation ago, and witchcraft the one before that. These advances have come from following a scientific method, one that has revealed that what Obi-Wan said is fact, and potentially one that will set humanity free from reliance on this one planet. Whatever it takes to terraform Mars and ship a billion people there, it's got to be easier to deflect the asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes to terraform Mars to turn it into Earth. If you had the power of geoengineering to do that, then you have the power of geoengineering to turn Earth back into Earth. So what has scientific method and peer-reviewed research revealed about how we judge truth and how multiple perspectives can give to widely different truths? Bill Barr gave the order to push protesters back before President Trump walked out. The police did not respond other than to move the protesters back. Several officers, armed to the teeth, wearing protective riot gear dressed in all black, clad with plastic shields and backed up by what was effectively cavalry on horses, began rounding everyone up and pushing them out. This was the sort of tactic that was designed to get violent. Years of study of crowd control have shown that the way to de-escalate a situation like this is effectively to do the exact opposite. Within the field of psychology, the Spinozian model and the Cartesian model are widely used frameworks to explain how memories are sorted and stored as truth or fiction. Both these theories rely on credibility tack placed on the memory, but whereas the Cartesian model suggests that both truth and false memories have a tag, the Spinozian model proposes that only falsities are tagged. We agreed that we should go for a short drive to see if I could drive safely. We agreed that I could drive safely, we should turn around and go home. I felt a bit sick. Now you're going to get out of this one, but it's going to be fun. No. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, people who know me would know that um, I, I'm not an authority on driving um, and that I'm not the best person in the world to ask detailed questions about driving. No, I merely asked you um, if you've ever a, been on a 60 mile round trip to test your eyesight and you said you had. I mean, why not, not go to no, spec that's not good enough. That in itself is an offence under the Road Traffic Act. Uh, well, uh, Dominic's eyesight was good enough. That was the, the whole point of the, the journey, to determine that, uh, that he could drive safely. More recent work points towards the Cartesian model being the most likely. However, perhaps more telling is the fact that their work, as well as others, shows a clear difference between the retention of memories with negative or positive source credibility and those without. Therefore showing that if memories are given a validity rating when formed, they are more likely to be remembered. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. Well, calling people thugs and calling on people to get shot is stems from the same sort of attitude that resulted in the death of George Floyd. The, the tough guy, macho man, I'm going to make you do what I want you to do attitude uh, is the heart of the problem. And we need the, the president and everybody else who thinks that you can get to a better place through threats of violence to stop it. Uh, I think you know, violence begets violence. And Trump's angry words just feed uh, an ugly cycle that is going on. From a biological perspective, administration of corticosterone into mice has been shown to increase amygdala-dependent fear memory, but not contextual memory in the hippocampus, suggesting any negative fear tag is localised within the amygdala. 
by injecting protein synthesis inhibitors to stop growth of certain cells in the amygdala, the brain's fear hub. Furthermore, research has shown that the basal actual amygdala cells are used to provide memory engrams with contextual label or by a bidirectional switch, providing a positive or negative tag to a memory, thus showing similarities with the Carsanian model and helping to explain how we rate our experiences and whether that memory should be kept long term or degraded. A big difference. You can pretend things all you want, but, but reality has a way to catch up. And, and, and the truth has a way to, to make itself known. Gravity works whether you believe in it or not. So our memories are tagged with true or false and increased with fear. This could help to explain why our politics are dominated by doom and gloom and how that has been used to convince the populace to disbelieve the experts. Because the politicians are experts, but not in finance, science or health, in manipulating the differences between true fact and lies. Politically speaking, studies show that people get more conservative when they feel threatened or afraid and more liberal when they feel safe. Next time, we'll be looking at forgetting. Please like, subscribe and share.